difficulty or even to say that you have a question or comment and we'll go from there. Okay, so good evening everyone and welcome to General Council of September 14th. I first would like to begin with any identification of any media on the line. Donna from the Two Row Times. Good evening, Donna. Uh, Victoria Gray from the Turtle Island News. Good evening as well, Victoria. And thank you for joining us. I'll now move into any changes uh, or additions or deletions to the agenda. Seeing or hearing none, can I get a motion to adopt the General Council agenda of September 14th? Moved by Audrey, second by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Oh, no. Hearing none, motions carried. Uh, we do have a number of delegations this evening. We have three to that. Our first delegation is Jeff Tom, uh, of First Nations Cable. Uh, so good evening. I'll just, I'll, what I'll do is pass the floor right to yourself just to, uh, to present your item uh, and then we'll get into any questions or comments. Okay, thank you, Chief. Um, my name is Jeff Thomas. I'm the owner and operator of First Nations Cable, Six Nations Internet. Uh, we've been operating for about a little over 30 years. Um, I've uh, run into the issue here, like everybody's familiar with, with ExploreNet and Rogers and uh, um, what's best for our community. And um, I wrote, I wrote a letter back after the last general meeting uh, dated August 31st, 19, or 2021 here. Um, it's in regards to what I saw on the meeting itself. And uh, I was pretty upset when I saw it. Um, I thought it was unjust and unfair and I, I really felt there and didn't do a very good job. I filled out this PowerPoint that they asked me to fill out and none of, none of what I had to say was on there. And starting with that, you know, like, I mean, uh, it's real tough to, to sit here and be criticized over this, uh, you know, what they're trying to do and what I'm trying to do. So I thought the best thing for us to do is for me to talk directly to you guys explain what we're doing and how we're doing it and why we're doing it. And then uh, you can make your own general assumptions from there. So um, what I, I'll start with this letter here. Everybody should have a copy of it. I, I sent them out and um, I apologize for all the emails I've been sending and all the paper and hopefully everybody got a chance to take a look at it. Um, it's just in general, like what, what I saw at the meeting, I mean, that's self-explanatory. I'm not going to get into any finger pointing or anything, but, you know, I just want everybody to know I wasn't very pleased with what Matt's presentation was. And uh, um, I would have preferred not to participate the way things were at that point. Okay. Um, so with our project, what we're trying to do is... Uh, there's two issues. I broke it broke it down into two issues. One is the trunking side of things or the backbone. Um, this has been the biggest headache that we've been fighting with for the last two years. We've been fighting over this. Um, is trying to get enough bandwidth in here to support the community. Uh, right now, what we do is we buy retail from Bell Canada and it's through the roof. They buy their bandwidth like a gig, cost them two, $200 a gig. They charge us $3,500 a gig. So this is a big issue for us. And, you know, to try and create packages that is, is still affordable for the community and give them a good enough packages that will support what they need to do. So obviously this one gig is not going to do that. So, um, we shopped around and we, we tried different scenarios and we tried wireless companies. We tried uh, Metroloop out of Caledonia before they went to explore that. And uh, it all fell through. So um, I talked to Net Neutral, which is uh, Walt uh, from the radio station. And uh, he's got a service from Stony Creek. And um, then we talked to Hydro One. 
Hydro One has a breakout at the Middleport uh, substation. So we put our heads together and we figured out our path in here. And, um, and that's, that's starting as we speak now. Um, we've requested the permits and uh, locates and uh, hopefully by the end of the month, we're gonna start working on it. That is a million dollar project to build this. And uh, we're, we're doing it out of our own pocket and some private investments. Um, we're not asking Ben for any money. And uh, what, what's going to happen, we hope to have this up and running at the latest by the end of the year. Our target date is December 1st. Now, what this does for us, and uh, when I say us, I mean the community, that gives us access to a 100 gigabit loop. So this is huge. This is something that is needed. Um, we're going to start at 10 gigabits. Um, it's burstable up to 100 gigabits. Um, the sky's the limit with this. So, okay, now you ask, well, what's a 100 gigabit circuit going to do for us? Well, everything that everybody needs, like we're building a, gig, a GPON system, which is a, a one gig shared amongst 32 homes. That's what we're building right now. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but what, what's gonna happen with that? This 100 gigabits gonna allow us to, to support these 32 homes circuits. Plus it also allows us um, to feed um, businesses, dedicated fibers, the school board, the police station, uh, I have grade, I have Inspire, I have uh, Polytech on, I got the library on, um, and there's a few private businesses as well. Now, what we're trying to do is create better packages that will support uh, for what, what our customers are paying, we can give them a better package, what the bottom line is. And, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do is, Everybody needs more bandwidth. It, it doesn't matter what field you're in, whether you're just teaching your kids at home or whether you're, uh, you're streaming, watching movies, whether you're uh, doing home business out of it. Everybody needs more bandwidth. And that, that's, that's the bottom line. And that's what we're trying to build here. And um, I look at Silo and I look at Rogers, what they offered. And I'll tell you, um, in my letter, I called it a dead end service. And what I mean by dead end service is a service that's just there to entertain the house. No further, no future build, no development. All that's there for is basically serve whatever the, whatever the household needs or the business needs and that's it. Well, we're going one step further with a 100 gigabit loop. I can tell you right now, we're prepared for the future. COVID comes back and we have to go back into the houses. We have the bandwidth to do that. Um, once we build the network, I'm telling you, this, this, is, um, this is the solution. Wireless is not a solution, it's an alternative. And the reason I say that is because uh, it's hit and miss with wireless. Um, it's in and out with the weather. There's so many different factors that affects the wireless. When you're wired directly into your house, your, con your connection is continuous. And you know, anybody tells you any different, I'm telling you, it's, it's not true. And the only, only difference that can happen now there are only problems is if somebody digs up the line or the hydro goes off. We have a backup generator here. We have a UPS here. We have our power stays on every day, 724. If a customer has or a business has a generator at their premise, your service will never be off. The other side of wireless is there's a health scare with wireless. I'm sure everybody's read articles about 5G. They say they're not bringing 5G in, but I'm telling you, they're bringing 5G in. And I'm, it's a, right now, it's not proven. There's nobody's did any surveys. Nobody's made it public. Um, the community's up in arms. 
There was a big issue in Peterborough about two weeks ago. They um, shut down one whole site, cut a ladder out, cut eight feet out of the ladder, pulled all the cables down, and that's just not there. They're all over North America, they're doing this. And it's all based on 5G theory. So there's a concern there and a liability issue there. And I can tell you by running fiber, which is glass, from our premise to the customer's premise, it's all glass. There's no wireless. There's a, a small wireless in the house if you choose, or you can go wired right to your TV set, right to your computer, right to your router. Um, you have a choice, but it's a low power. It's just like having a wireless router in your house. It'll be no different technology than that. So there's no threat there. Community safe, everybody's happy, very reliable. So that's that's what we're promoting right now. This is this is where we're heading with our service right now. And I will tell you, we're going to continue on regardless of what happens. Um, I'm here to try and do this properly, trying to get the support of the band. I'm trying to get the support of the chiefs. I'm trying to get. I already have the support of the community. I have lots and lots of community. Like we got over three thousand signatures. Doesn't matter where I go. I can go California, I can go to a golf course, I can go wherever and people are asking me constantly, what's happening? Why are they bringing Rogers in here? Why are they allowing ExploreNet in here? If, if 5G goes up in there, I'm gonna tear that tower down. And I got, think about it. If your family was living across from this tower, would you want that there? One of your grandkids, one of your kids, one of your great grandkids, you have a 5G tower that's continuously bombarding you with radiation. This is an issue and it's a serious issue. And it's something that nobody has laid out there in the public. I've seen no surveys on it, nothing. And it's an issue and it's a liability issue, a big issue. Did Hazel have a question? No, no, I didn't, not yet anyway. I just see your name up there, that's all. Oh. Okay, so um, these are the things that we're looking at right now um, as far as the trunking goes. We have, uh, like I said, we're gonna bring this 100 gigabit circuit in. We're gonna link through Hydro One. Um, we're gonna also link back to um, uh, Stony Creek to get to uh, net neutral. They're gonna be between the two, we'll have a redundant path. So which means that we're gonna keep this up and running that, that famous 99.9% uh, service on all the time. So that's the figure that we're, we're aiming for. And uh, redundant paths we're gonna create throughout. Uh, Hydro One has another link they wanna create back to Vanessa. And then we'll have another service coming in from the other side. So this thing is just, uh, it's solid. It's 100% solid, which you need in today's age. You know, if A6N happens to cut our cable again, um, they won't shut our whole system down. Once this, this build is done, we'll have different routes where we can back switch and all this. And, the system will only be partially done, just parts of it, not very much. So this is all what we're incorporating in the backbone side of things. And uh, the second part of this thing is what we call the distribution. And that's been labeled the fiber to the home build. Now it, it's the easy part of this. Once we have the, the connection here, Building fiber to the individual homes is just basically um, building a little system to each. Like I said, we're going to do 32 homes. Each system will be a 32 home loop and fiber back to our office. And that's pretty much it. So um, the distribution part of it, very simple. I don't know if everybody's aware, but we did apply for the Universal Broadband Fund. Now, one of the things that I got back from them 
is that they, uh, they didn't acknowledge the chiefs, which we have a letter from. Um, they wanted a letter from council and uh, in order for this to go through. Well, they didn't really say it that way. They just said they'd prefer to see a letter from council. So this is kind of what this is all leading up to is I want a support letter from you guys, if possible. So um, like I talked about, we, we did a survey of our own through the community. We got over, like I think it's around 3,500 signatures right now with the community saying they don't want Rogers in here. They don't want to explore that in here. People already had a taste of exploring that and they had a taste of silo and they don't want that no more. They want something more solid than that. And we're prepared to offer that. Now, Darren had talked about in, uh, in that meeting, he had talked about us taking three years. Well, it, he didn't read the full statement. What I said, it'd be three years if we don't get this grant. If we have to go through our operations for the capital then yeah, it would take us three years, maybe even a little longer. But if we get this universal grant, I can tell you right now, there'll be three or four construction companies working in here um, to get this done as quick as possible. We can probably do it in less than two years. So this is, this is a key point here that I wanna stress is, uh, you know, th this universal grant um, is very important to what we're doing. Um, the sad part of this, I, I think about silo and I think about uh, exploring that, the capital that was spent on this already. We could have uh, wired the reserve three or four times by now with the amount of money that was spent on a useless wireless system, a system that is not fully functional, does not pick up every customer. Like you're, you're lucky when you put up a wireless tower, you're lucky to reach 30 to 40% of your customers. I saw a thing on uh, the new system from Explorer and that they said 98%. Uh, good luck with that because that's not going to happen. I can, I can assure you that's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's an alternative. Wireless has its advantage. It, it turns around pretty quick. You can fire it up within three months, all of that, but you get what you pay for. Um, the best thing is wired. And if you know there's money out there to cover that cost of wiring it, why not? You know, it makes all the sense in the world. The other thing is they don't talk about their contracts. This is something that everybody has to be aware of. Overage charges and yearly contracts. These companies make a pile of money a year on contracts. You know, uh, you sign up for a three year deal, they give you a special rate at the start and they, the next thing you know, you're paying four or $500 a month. You're saying, well, geez, I'm not gonna pay that. So you disconnect. First thing they throw at you is a contract saying, you sign this contract, you owe us uh, for how many months are left? You know, and you have to pay those or they go after your credit rating. The second part of that is uh, overage charges. You know, you got to read the fine print on their contracts and it's there. I've seen three contracts from Rogers already and uh, ExploreNet has changed theirs as well. All the promises they made when they first came in, they've all changed. Just read the flyers, I'll tell you, you'll see them. That's where we're finding them or go to their websites. And uh, with us, there's no contract and there's no overage charges. When we, we tell you what our, like we're gonna start our first package will be 50-10 which is uh, 50 up, or pardon me, 10 up, 50 down. And um, that's $65 a month. And that's all you're going to see, $65 a month. And take it as long as you want. Leave when you want. We don't hold nobody. But once you get on it, you'll be happy with what you see. 
And that's just the very starting edge of our packaging. Um, one of the things that's happening in the industry right now is uh, we're getting into more symmetrical networks now is what they call it. Um, where you see 50, 50 slash five, I just said 50 slash 10. Well, you're finding that these networks are getting more and more symmetrical. And what that means is that both ends at one time when you did the request, so you, you send to a server and say, okay, I wanna watch this movie. Now what happens is uh, it's a small request. It doesn't take much data to, to re make that request. So, and the movie is the big download. So what's happening now with the new technology is you're getting video stream. Like for example, what we're doing right now, you're getting streaming both ways. So what's happening is you're requiring more bandwidth on the upside of things now. And I, I can see this with a business being done at home and schooling and all this being done at home. It's going to get more and more uh, symmetrical as we go. At some point, I can see it being 50-50 on both sides. And it'll be no different than a dedicated fiber. That's what we do with a dedicated fiber. We give you 100, like whatever package you order. It's the same on the up and the downside. So all of that is changing. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't uh, foresee what's coming down the pipe here from uh, the future, but uh, what the network that we're building will be prepared for that. So that's the point I'm trying to make is we're building a system that's there for the future, not just something that's going to suit the today's needs. We're talking uh, tomorrow's needs, next week's needs, and hopefully for the next 20 years, we'll be able to cover until the new technology comes in. So that's an important factor is that uh, we're just not being a dead end service going to dig in somebody's wallet. And what we're trying to do is build something that's gonna sustain our community, help develop our community. I mean, we have a lot of good young minds out there, whether whatever digital field they're in, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's who knows, cell phones, it could be server farms, it could be anything. But there's a lot of good minds out there that will be looking for bandwidth. And this is an important point too as well that uh, it will be available here at a rate that everybody can afford, not what Rogers wants to charge or these retailers, well, it'll be a wholesale rate. And that is very important. That's something that we don't have here right now. And we won't have with ExploreNet and we won't have with Rogers, I can guarantee you that. Rogers is the most expensive cable company or uh, internet provider out there. And ExploreNet has the worst reputation. So from what I see, somebody really didn't do their homework. Um, anyway, um, I think that pretty much covers uh, the two parts of the project. One of the key things I wanted to bring up was, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but ExploreNet is, and, and uh, Metroloop, the old Metroloop, they're placing fiber in the Grand River right now. And uh, I don't know about you, but I feel that's, uh, it should never happen. So um, I don't know if they have permission from band council or not. Um, the chiefs weren't aware of it. I notified them and I'm notifying you guys right now that they're building right out to Dunville through the Grand River. And I don't think they should be allowed to do that. So I don't know whether this is one of the best kept secrets around here or what, I'm not sure 100%, but I thought it's a tidbit that everybody should know. I did send a couple of, uh, there's one that says Anaquat Connect 2020, and then there's a FNC proposal logic diagram. It just kind of explains uh, the logic diagram would be the distribution to the household. 
just so that you kind of get an idea how we're going to do things. And um, the other one um, where you see Toronto, Chicago, Hamilton, Brantford Exchange, um, this is the route through net neutral and hydro one. This is our trunking or our backbone. Um, at some point, we're going to have a link to Chicago, and that's phenomenal. Um, you guys might not think we need a link like that, but it, it gets us a link to um, Yahoo, Amazon, all the big names. We're linked right directly to their sites. There's no latency. There's no issues with that. Excuse me. When you go through somebody else's system, you, you get into what they call latency and, and issues with that. By us doing this, we're peering at these places and then we're creating what they call a pop point of presence. And um, this just opens everything up to the world for us. And when I say us, I mean Six Nations. I don't mean us in general. I know Darren says I was trying to monopolize his one of these statements, mon monopolize the, the communications and of things. And that's not my game plan. My game plan is to provide a service here for the community. What happens, like I said, we got a lot of young entrepreneurs that haven't showed their face yet. We have a lot of people that have been approached already about people wanting bandwidth. They have their own plans. That's all we want. Well, we just want to be able to create that link for everybody because that's going to help develop our community. Like I stated in our letter, our economy is the most important thing. We need to establish that. We need to enforce it. We need to create new venues. That way our community is strong and vibrant. It's gonna last a long time. And to me, that's the most important thing here. You know how they always say that we're at least five years behind surrounding communities. Well, this will put us to the leading edge, I'll tell you that right now. So I, that's pretty much what I got to say. I'm open for questions for anybody that's got any questions. I'm sure there's lots. Okay, <clears throat> Nyawa, Nyawa Jeff for, uh, for presenting this evening uh, and being in, coming in front of council. Uh, I, I too, I know I, I will go to questions and, and comments very shortly, but just to start us off, uh, for one, you know, I know like even through the connectivity and broadband task force, and this has been reiterated time and time uh, in terms of reaching out. And I know that you had issues in the beginning because I don't see that you had the plans at that time as you do now, uh, which is I think is, is it's, it's quite different from that point in time to where you are now. Um, and I think, you know, from our, our meetings and what we've had is, you know, we've all, I've always reiterated the fact of supporting our own local businesses. You know, that's not, I don't think the, the intent of council to put you out of business per se. So that I just wanted to make that clear that, you know, we have been wanting to support and to even further to at this point still, how can we support your business and while still achieving a community need uh, and getting that addressed. So, you know, th those for me still uh, are very much, uh, you know, a part of how we move forward. I, the, the other piece is, it's almost like, it's like, it's, it's like damned if you do and damned if you don't for everything around here, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we obviously didn't anticipate COVID and the impacts that it's had. But to sure. shift everyone over on homes to, like you say, being now having to learn from home, having to work from home, we were just not prepared. And so we had Nobody to was. do something. Yes. Well, nobody was. You're right. Yeah. And so we had to react, really. And we had to come up with plans, um, you know, quite quickly. Uh, obviously, with the towers, we knew that that wasn't going to be the full capacity, but we knew that we had to have an interim plan which is what the serve the purpose of the towers is for that interim time until we look to this bigger picture of how we get, uh, you know, broadband or fiber across the territory. So just wanted to make those comments that I still very much believe in, 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 in your company and, and what you can achieve. I believe, and I believe the whole council has, has said this as well as, you know, these are our own people. And like you said, we have a lot of young people and, and, good minds that can come up with this plan to see this through. So again, you know, I, I still feel 
um, the same in terms of how we best support our own local businesses to do this work as well. Um, but again, just wanted to start this conversation off on those points. I know there's a couple, for me, that's the first, uh, and I know there's something in the chat. I think Beth, Bethany might have put something in the chat. But that is the first I'm hearing of exploring it, putting anything along or in the Grand River. Yes. So there, there has not been anything that has come to our office. Um, I'm not even sure this is really the first time that I'm hearing it. Um, so I, I'm already reaching out to contacts to see and clarify what this means, because that's the other part of this problem is misinformation and unfactual things. Because if, if the chief and council don't know anything about that, then that's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. um, and it's well, the first time we're hearing this. Metroloop has, um, earlier on, they built from Caledonia to York already. That's already up and running. And nobody's been notified about that. And now they're going out through Kyogo out to Dunville. That's all. Well, and, and those, those, are, those are definitely areas, again, that we can, uh, we can, again, do our own due diligence and to figure and to clarify those pieces. Because if that's the case, then you're right. We need to be involved in those conversations and we need to figure that out uh, once and for all, really, to gather all of these facts. And I think mm -hmm. that, again, just reaching out to our contacts to make sure that we can, if that's the case, again, set up a meeting to see where now do we go from this point and why we weren't um, consulted on that piece. Absolutely. So there, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, missing items, I think, in order for us to have a more fulsome discussion. But again, nonetheless, uh, you know, even with the survey results, and I, I, I apologize that you felt, you know, you, you were not too pleased with those pieces. Uh, but again, mm -hmm. it's to try to gain community in terms of where they want to go with this as well. And I think that's the, the important piece as well is the engagement piece with community. Community is even saying, you know, we want to support local businesses. We all, we, I think even we still had the campaign of shop local, shop native, even more so even now with COVID-19 and, and mm -hmm. supporting small businesses and community. So we know economy is important, like you had mentioned. Um, so again, just wanted to start off with those on, the, on those few points. Uh, again, we don't want to, we know with 5G, we know with the radiation, all those people, that's not the intent that we want to harm others while doing this either. You know, so it's, it's clarifying those pieces as well. Like, you know, just as much as I think, you know, how much radiation does a microwave give off? How much does our cell phones give off? And all those pieces, where is the data and all those to those as well? Because that's part of the, pro the, the issue as well. Not just specifically just internet towers per se. You know, we still have a lot of gadgets that, that give off a lot of radiation that I think should deserve even more data to those pieces. But I, I think that's for another conversation. But I think, again, moving forward, I want to try to move forward in the best way so we don't have to come to community contention all the time. We know we need a need in this community. We know that we internet is important at this point. Uh, we know that it's not going away. We know that a lot of businesses, school, a lot of uh, it's a new way of doing business um, and that it's, it's not going away. We need to come up with a solution together. We need to fix it now. So uh, again, th those are just my, some of my comments. I do see a number of hands being raised. I'll start with uh, Wendy has her hand raised uh, and then we'll go to any further questions and comments. Mark, it's Hazel. I have a question. Okay, thank you, Hazel. I'll start with Wendy and I'll shift over to Hazel. Wendy, you have the floor. Thank you, Mark. And thanks for the presentation. Uh, Jeff, I mean, I read through every document that you sent through. There's a lot of great information in there. I was uh, especially intrigued by Hydro One and the connection that you have there and, and that partnership because we have shares in Hydro One. So that seems like a pretty natural fit to me to have that and have that extension. And I'd love to know more about that and how that can work because that's a solution for, for the community. Absolutely. And and I have to say, since day one, since this, you know, was first born, I said very clearly in meetings that we have to invest in our own companies. We have to grow our companies. How do we do that? If there's financial investment that we have to make to, to do that work, that's what we should be looking at first and foremost. So, and I've been consistent with that message all, all the way through. Uh, I'm not a fan of ExploreNet and every meeting when we hear updates, I raise concerns about community complaints ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the end of the day, as, as the elected chief has said, we need connectivity. So how do we do that? What are the solutions for the community to get that the quickest way possible to have that so solid service? So how do we do that? 
I don't know if we can take a look at, uh, Mark, get a summary of what the stages are, where we're at, all of those things. I certainly have no problem supporting a, a letter to support your application to the universal broadband. Um, I think that should have been done at the onset um, when we started all of this. So that's where I sit. That's what I'm interested in. Um, certainly that Hydro One aspect though, absolutely. And, and how do we grow this? How do we get the connectivity to meet the need? So thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nyawa Wendy, for your uh, for your comments and suggestions as well. And I'll look to next steps after we go through any other questions and, and comments. Uh, I'll shift over now to Hazel. Yeah, I would just like to um, make some uh, statements with regard to um, the services that we've already had on Six Nations. Um, I've been with ExploreNet for I don't know how many years. And yes, that's true, Jeff, I had to sign contracts. Mm -hmm. And each time you sign a contract, you're supposed to have better service. But the only thing that was going up was the monthly cost Absolutely. to the point where it was 110. Uh, just since these towers were put up and because of all the counselors, I know I had the most difficult time trying to join into the Zoom meetings because I spent most of my time trying to reconnect after being um uh, disconnected from the meeting. That in itself as a counselor is very upsetting because you're missing topics, you're missing a lot of the conversation. And it, it created a lot of stress for me. So when these towers went up, you know, I was happy there's a tower up now because they came and they changed my um, ExploreNet from a satellite to the tower. It now gives me faster speed and I don't keep getting disconnected when I'm on my um, laptop during the Zoom meetings. The one thing that um, I know um, from working at council is that fiber is more secure um, than any other type of internet service. If you have fiber, you're in good hands with that. So I'm thinking if you're uh, planning to um, put that for Six Nations as a whole, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And especially, I don't know what, what package you said would be $65 a month. Is that your best package? No, how, no. Is, how is the package is determined? Because even though um, Exploring that changed me from being on a satellite to over to these towers, I went from 110 a month. Now I'm at 99. Do you that's know still, what your, what that's your still a lot. Is? Do you know but, what your package is? Like, did they tell you? No. Um, they just came and changed it and said, you're all ready to go. And the only thing that I noticed different is it went down about $10 in the monthly cost. And I don't keep getting disconnected all the time. Well, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But, but um, I'm thinking that people are going to, once you start this project and people want good connection, they're going to make that choice to switch over anyway. Right now, we did, I didn't have that choice. So I went with this explore net onto the um, towers. And but that's if I, understandable. That, like you got to have service either way, right? Right, yeah. So. Okay, thank so you. what I, is there, uh, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Hazel. Are there any further questions or comments? I see Audrey has her hand up. Yeah, I have a, a, a couple of uh, points to make. And that is that what the members are telling us on the reserve as well is that they would like to have a choice, the choice of who they deal with and which provider, because that's where we're moving to this whole project that we're talking about now was to, uh, is an interim is to put up the towers so that people could have more access to internet. So at and, and the same time, they're building a plan for internet serve, or sorry, fiber for the entire reserve. So everybody wants to do fiber. And I'm, I'm just not sure is why is it something that we can work on together so that the homeowners do have um, a choice. They should be able to have a choice of who their provider is. And um, 
I guess the other part is the attention to customers is that, you know, there are lots of, of complaints for every service. People being called and, and uh, having their service go down and call and get an email and email and uh, no help for two to three weeks having to do your work on a phone. So all those things have to be taken into account and that faster building of it and the faster service, like for when people are down, they, they need it, that for work, the kids need that for school. So all that has to be taken into account, I think. And also I would like to have more time to look at the service and I would like to have somebody uh, explain it to us as well as our people who are on the task force, I think need to be uh, present or at least need to see this um, uh, tape here. And I think we need to have discussions with them as well before we make any decisions, whether we're going to write a letter. I support- well, Audrey, I've been doing this for over 40 years. I've got quite a reputation. I've, um, I'm an electronic uh, technician. I've uh, graduated, I've done it all. I've built networks for companies off reserve for years. And I'm going to tell you, your task force is, oh man, I can't, I hate to say what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it. They're not qualified to make these kinds of decisions. If they did, they wouldn't have settled with Silo. Silo was the biggest joke around. That man, come out, Andreas, come out here to get free money. That's all he did. And that's what he got away with. And then he made millions off of selling the Explorer Net. Now he's back knocking on the door with ExploreNet again. We need to keep these guys out of our community. That's the bottom line. That's the way I look at things. Well, I, I'm just speaking for people who have said that they want to have a choice. So okay. uh, that being said, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Audrey, uh, for your comments as well. Again, I think, it, you know, as we as we move forward here, we we still have we as we're sitting here discussing, we still have a lot of people who don't have Internet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as much as we can go back and forth. And I know, again, Jeff, uh, like with the the invitation that was sent to you in the, in the very beginning, you know, we've I think that's we've been that was the goal is to can work together. For the very about that, Mark? You know, the invitation came in November. Like I said, I had, a, I had problems with my eyes. But Linda Parker stood on the, this last meeting. She, she stated in there that they've been working on this for two years. Well, it's not been two years since November to now. How come it took so long to get a hold of me? How come I wasn't involved in this silo project? Matt Jameson stood up right in council said, um, Helen asked him, how oh, did you check with Jeff Thomas on this? How's he feel about this? He said, oh, he's all right with it. Matt stands in front of me. I don't even know what he looks like. He's never, ever called me, come to see me, never said one word to me. And that's the kind of feedback I get. The Swift, I had uh, Dale Bummery come into my office. He came in with this paper from the Swift grant. He says, hey, you might be interested in this. I said, all right, cool, bring it in. He's looking at it, then he goes to hand it to me and he says, oh, by the way, that was, it ended on Friday last week. That's the kind of stuff I've been putting up with. You know, and I, and I apologize. Fingers, but I'm telling you, like, I am totally pissed about this thing. We need yep. to do something and we need to do something now, not next week, now. It's, it's unfortunate, and, and I do understand your frustration, and I hear you loud and clear. I, I just I know there's been a number of names mentioned, and it's I think it's still unfair that they're not here to defend themselves as well. You know, so I think it wasn't it, there it's neither, right? Yeah, well, again, it works both ways. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's where we're trying to again come to some sort of we have to work together. I don't like regardless of of how we all you know from last year to, to now to wherever we go in the future we got to do this together I, that's all i'm saying is how do we do it together let's we have we here. know we need we, yes I, I see a number of hands being raised i i, I we can go around in circles all, all, all night uh but if we can start to shift in towards next steps i know that i have uh, some some next steps items here, but I first look to uh, the hands being raised. I see Nathan has his, uh, and then over to Wendy. Uh, Nathan, you have the floor. 
Thanks, Chief, and, and thanks, Chair, for the presentation. Um, I, too, really enjoyed the, the material sent over. I read intently. Um, and, and also the, um, the future kind of forecast that was, that was kind of provided in, in there. Um, I, I also kind of like and would like more information on the Hydro One. Uh, particularly, are they just providing infrastructure at this time, or are they putting, you know, resources behind that as well? No, uh, they're but, providing the infrastructure. Uh, they're providing the connection. That's it. So they provide the connection. What did you say about the interest? The infrastructure is on our shoulders. We're the ones that's providing the infrastructure. You guys are okay. Yes. Um, interesting. Um, I think we can explore that a little bit more in terms of looking for that political support vis-a-vis -vis and, and the connections. Um, but that's kind of for council to, to kind of decide going forward. Um, but I also kind of looking at it from um, where, where the chief left off is, is what are our next steps in terms of working together? Uh, and like Wendy, I have no problem providing a, a letter of support. Um, in, in terms of the universal broadband, I'm, I'm familiar with the fund. I know it kind of inside and out. Um, so happy to support uh, those aspects. Um, but at the end of the day, it goes back to um, what the chief just kind of outlined is how are we going to work um, together uh, within this community and ensure that um, we're, we're providing the best service possible. Because you're right, you know, the future does lie in fiber. Um, and, and that's where the community is going to go. I know. You know, you, you look at my, my son just joined computer science and he came down and, and he can't even, to do the work that he needs to do, he can't hook up within the community. He has to go outside the community to a Starbucks to hook up to do the work that he needs the bandwidth to provide them with. Okay. Um, so that's that's where we're at as a community. And, and I see in your proposal that you're, we're looking to do that. But um, I think the million dollar question is how do we do this together given you know the circumstances that happened? Um, I know history is important and it does move forward, uh, but I'm also looking at it from the betterment of, of everyone within the community. So um, if it takes uh, further discussions and, and I don't have the answer um, at my fingertips right now on how we do that, uh, but, you know, if we put our heads together, I think we can get there. Um, so I'll just leave my comments there. Uh, but, you know, fully support where you're going, read your material. Uh, as council knows, I'm, I'm a stickler on data and good data and facts. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I, I thank you for that. And I'll leave my comments there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Nathan, for your comments as well. I'll now shift over to Wendy. Thanks. And, and like Nathan, I'm, I'm interested in moving forward. So how do we grow this? How do we build this out? Um, I, I think you've got a great plan laid out. I think there's some unique options. And you know, just to reemphasize the Hydro One to see if we can do something with that, given the relationship that our, we already have. And I agree that there's things that we should be able to support in that growth moving forward. Um, a, certainly a letter is, is one thing. And I hear my colleagues talk about community wanting options, sure. But if we're gonna have those options, we also have to have fairness across the board. And we have to invest in our own companies even more so than those large corporations out there because you know history has, has taught us and it continues that you know they don't do a whole lot for for First Nations across the country. So, you know, it's it, it comes down to pennies what that investment back in the community is. And we know that, right? That's just the way that it operates. So we, we always try to grow our own and, and so support moving forward. So, uh, and, and I am sorry to hear that communications have not been, um, you know, to, to everybody's understanding because we're hearing different things. So it's great to have you in front of us speaking. And it would be even better, I think, to have everybody at the table, whether it's the task force yourself, and, and having this discussion and planning this forward and planning it out and that movement forward. Um, really interested in that. And to my understanding, we're not locked into anything with those other companies. We've got an MOU. We've got some principles. We are not locked into anything. So moving forward, and I've asked those questions quite clearly. So how do we do that? What are our next steps? If number one is, is doing that uh, support letter, I'll, I'm happy to make that motion mark when it's, mm -hmm. when it's time. And then what else can we do moving this forward? Thanks. Well, we, we got an MOU signed with um, 
uh, hydro and uh, net neutral myself and Anaquat. I, I sent that on there. I sent a couple of support letters that went with it. That kind of uh, explains uh, where we're tied in with uh, Hydro One. Um, we have a meeting on Thursday morning with Hydro One and um, we're about to sign the contract, a working contract with them now. Um, like I said, the permits are in the works. Uh, the locates have been requested. So we're going to start building this uh, infrastructure. There'll be 96 fibers built from uh, Millport on uh, White Baptist Church Road. Over, we're going to try and come up Mulligan Road and through uh, Middleport and then around to the bridge. And then they're going to pick up my, my system stops right at six line, right by two row architect. That's where my fiber ends. So we're going to build to that location. And then we're going to tie in what's going to happen. Hopefully by the end of this year, we will have connectivity that we've been looking for. Um, on the band side of things, um, I believe you're, you're buying uh, bandwidth through uh, a bell circuit from Hydro One right now. And there's a need to get away from uh, the bell circuit. And uh, I've made arrangements already with Hydro One. They're gonna continue servicing you, but they're going to utilize one of our fibers to do it. So it's a win-win already for everybody involved. And um, what it does here, I have approximately 800 customers on right now that are on the cable modem system. This allows me by building that front end up, it allows me to um, re-look at our, our packaging now. So I'm able to give more service, better service at the same price that they're paying now, um, larger packages is what it boils down to. So, I mean, that's the first stage. Now we're gonna get caught up in the winter time. Um, obviously we can't, usually the general rule of thumb is come Christmas time, we put all the digging equipment away. So then we're done till, till springtime. Um, if we get this letter from you guys now, we can submit this. We're going to submit our contracts. Uh, we've been talking to some of the politicians. Unfortunately, uh, like Matt Green was one of them. Unfortunately, they got an election going right now. So, um, But what we want to do is repackage everything. All the agreements we got. Hydro One's going to do a political thing from their side. Um, net neutral is going to do a political thing from our, from their side. And then what we could do with this letter from support from you guys, and we have our, our support here. And then what we're going to do is try and pressure all these politicians to go after the, the universal fund to try and push things together and get ready for the spring. And if we can get this through for the spring, What's going to happen is I'll bring in three or four contractors and we'll knock off as much as we can knock off before uh, winter of next year. And I figure we can put a, at least probably 75% of the reserve would be covered at that point. But it all okay, goes thank back you. to the grant. Okay, thank you uh, now for that, Jeff. I do see Sherry Lynn has her hand raised. Sherry Lynn? Um, yes, I'll, I'll second Wendy's motion. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily think it was a motion at this point. Correct me if I'm wrong, Wendy. What I was going to suggest is that was a step one, um, but I think there's some there's some more items that need to be that need to go before this one. Uh, what I want to do, and, and I think Wendy has already mentioned this piece, is getting all players to the table, back to the table. So that's the task force. That's full council. That's Jeff all the players. I think we need to also all digest uh, the survey results. And I know you, even for yours, uh, Jeff, I think you had, that was more of, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the over 3000 signatures uh, was more of a petition, not necessarily a survey per se. No, we, uh, but again, we went all over. It was a survey. 
Okay, so maybe again, we bring all those as well. Jeff, your, yours, including to the, the latest survey that was sent out, the extension date. Uh, and what I would like to do is call a special council meeting uh, early next week. I believe you said you have another meeting coming up this Thursday. Yes. Is that with, what's so what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that we call a, a special council meeting early next week uh, to go through the items that I've just la laid out in relation to the survey results, digest those pieces, uh, look to the items. And then after that is complete, then we look to the motion uh, to full council to support you in a support letter to the U, uh, UBF fund. Is, does that sound okay? Is there opposition to that? I don't have a problem with it. Just the time frame. that's all. That's what I'm concerned about. We need to, if you're going to help me, help me. If you're not, say you're not, and I'll move on with what I'm going to do anyway. Well, well I think, again, if, if that's the case, if that's the appetite of this council, no problem with how they want to proceed. I'm just trying to say, I think we're all wanting to help each other in, in, in getting this, this done in the best way forward. Uh, I just, uh, if we have to, even maybe at the end of the week, I, I do apologize. I know our SEO, unfortunately, is off this evening in a couple of days, just due, obviously due to bereavement. Um, so there's, there's some items that we're dealing with there, but I think nonetheless, we could try to turn this around rather quickly so that it does meet the time frame. Uh, I see Wendy has her hand up. Yeah, just for clarification, I, I am prepared. I agree with everything that you said, but I am prepared to make the motion on the letter of support tonight because I don't think that's, for me, it's not an issue doing that. I know we provided a letter of support for, I believe, Rogers for UBF. So I don't see the issue with providing a letter to Jeff and First Nations Cable. So okay. um, yeah, so I was prepared to move on that moving forward. I don't think it hinders... Okay us coming to the table and still talking and meeting and how we grow it. It just supports the options that Audrey and others talked about. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Wendy. So there is a motion on the floor. It's moved by Wendy uh, to support uh, Jeff Thomas in, in an application to the UBF fund. A letter of support is their seconder moved by, uh, second by Sherry Lynn. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the motion? And thank you for that clarification, Wendy. Seeing no further questions or comments, all in favor? Any opposed? Uh, it's Melba, uh, Mark. Uh, conflict of interest. And Mark, I want recorded that I wanted to have the meeting first to discuss this prior to any kind of a letter going out. Not Again, I, I, I have a vote here. Motion on the floor. Sorry if I can just take this back. There's a motion on the floor. It's been moved and seconded. Malba is declaring a conflict of interest. Audrey is opposed. Is there any others opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Cool. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Wendy, seconder. Second by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? One opposed, uh, Audrey Paulus Bombery. Again, she's laid out her reasons why she's opposed. Motions carried. Okay, Jeff, that means, again, I, I still believe this meeting still has to occur. Uh, you know, I think rather rather sooner than later if i'll look to time frames that we, we can if we can do it by the end of the week we will if not it has to be early next week if that's okay um, and again it's bring all I, can, I can probably get hydro one to come to the table and i can also get uh, net neutral to come to the table and uh, bring the guys that are behind us as well so as long okay. as you and have just, just, enough time also, just to clarify uh, as well, I did receive a message back saying that there is uh, there is no um, in relation to the Grand River exploring it. That that is not true. So I, I'm sure well we can have a further discussion no guys around that. Guys that are case. working on that right now. So guys that well, are again, that's the project. That's something that we'll have to further clarify. I just wanted to give that heads up. I see Wendy has her hand up. Yeah, I was just going to ask if that meeting on Thursday with Hydra One, I don't know if you're opposed, Jeff. I mean, Mark, and I don't know if you're available. I know you're you're quite busy, but is there a way to even uh, participate in that just to, to hear and see if there's anything that 
we can do to support that process and the expansion of Hydro One? You know, can they chip in with infrastructure? You know, something like that, given the relationship that we already have. Just putting it on the table for consideration. Yeah, I think what we can do, Wendy, just for that, Jeff, is maybe we can work with you, Tammy, and I to the chief's office. Uh, just work with you directly and to see if there's if the availability and schedules work, and would would definitely be okay. open to to join. I'll, if, uh, I'll contact Hydro One uh, tomorrow, and then uh, I'll get back to you on it. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any further questions or comments for Jeff? Again, I, I think it's important to note that we need to do this together. Our mm -hmm. community is a long list of needs. We want to work together. That's, I think, if there's any message, we've got to do this together. I agree. Okay, well, now, Jeff, for joining us this evening, oh. and uh, Tammy and I, our office will reach out to you uh, probably tomorrow to figure out for Thursday, and then we'll go from there from that point. Okay. Now, I'll want to get help. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, Council, that leads us into our next uh, delegate. Oh, sorry. Audrey, did you have a question? Or are you just waving bye? Going into yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you. Now, Audrey. Okay, so I'll shift into our next delegation, Council. Uh, sorry, is Dorothy Russell on the line? If I don't see her here, I didn't get confirmation she'd be attending. Okay, can I then maybe, I did see Bethany on the line. Maybe we shift into our third delegation. Is Bethany on the line? Yes, I am here. Sago, Scano, uh, good evening, Lucky okay, Chief and Council. Uh, today okay. I am uh, asking that we give the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry permission to distribute the on-rab uh, vaccine baits on the reserve by hand. Um, the OnRab vaccine is a rabies vaccine that is targeted to raccoons, uh, skunks, and foxes. Um, and in the past, council has given permission for this to occur. Um, they are suggesting that they come in a marked vehicle, um, that the the vaccine baits be distributed in air, discrete areas like gardens, shrubs, and wooded areas. Uh, they are saying it will take four hours or less. Um, the vaccine itself is not harmful to pets or animals at all, although should an animal, uh, a domestic animal, accidentally eat one, they are advising us that um, they should contact a veterinarian just in case. Uh, the baits are basically, they look like um, a large pill in a pill packet. That's what they look like. They're in a sort of yellow blister pack and there is a black label on top, a black warning label saying what it is. And um, yes, yeah, so that, that's pretty much it. If anyone has any questions, now would be the time. Nyawa. Okay, Nyawa, Bethany, uh, for, for your presentation. Uh, there, your council, there is a recommendation for C1 with on your, within your agendas. Uh, now I'll look to questions or comments. Wendy? So, so two, a, a, a couple of things. So number one, I don't have a problem with, with the motion. I would prefer that in the rec recommendation in number one, that we're granting permission for the ministry to work with um, the Six Nations Wildlife Manager to distribute, because I think it's important that our wildlife manager is working together and not just the ministry coming in and doing this, right? So I think we need that connection there. Um, the question I do have is they're covering the cost of all of this, I assume. Um, the cost isn't coming to us. The other question I have is not too long ago, there, there was a number of sightings, the yellow planes were flying around and there were some articles about those yellow planes were actually dropping rabies um, vaccines packages. So um, that came through the aerial rabies vaccine bait and that was in August. So this is a secondary program to that or because I think we issued that uh, release. <laughs> Yes, uh, so for, to your first question or comments, uh, the intention is for us to work together with MNRF on this. 
Um, if that wording isn't clear, I'm perfectly happy to change it um, in the motion. Uh, secondly, they are covering the cost, so this is purely us just giving them permission. Uh, thirdly, this is part of the exact same program as the aerial bait distribution, so this is just additional distributing by hand so that they get into these targeted areas because you can't really target areas from the aerial point of view, and I think they uh, are looking to distribute them in Oshwagen. Uh, so. Yes, and I believe I believe the reason that the the aerial program didn't require permission is because we actually have an existing agreement with them for that already, to my knowledge. Um, but I can certainly double check that for you if you'd like. This is my first year doing this, so. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Bethany. It looks like there's a follow up question or comment, Wendy. Yeah, so, so I'm happy to make this motion, but just prefer to say that uh, the elected council grant permission to the Six Nations Wildlife Manager to work with the Ministry of Natural Resources to distribute. Um, if we can change that wording, then I'm fine with it. The other caveat is that if it's in the village of Oshwegan, that homeowners, anybody be contacted in advance. So they're well aware of this, if somebody's coming into their property and that, and making sure that they're okay with it. So making sure that we have you know all of that completed before this happens okay yes should should they be entering anybody's property that's not uh council owned i will ensure that we get, get permission from individuals prior to that happening as well as the notice to community as well that this is ongoing that's that's a really good point and so there's thank you for that bethany there's a motion on the floor that's moved by wendy with the the uh just the word change uh, to be inclusive, to include our wildlife officer working in conjunction. Is there a seconder to that motion? I'll second. Second by Michelle. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motions carried. Can I get a motion to waive second reading? Moved by Wendy, seconder. Sure, I'll second. Second by Michelle to waive second reading. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Okay, well, thank you, Nyawa, Bethany, for joining us this evening and looking uh, forward to a uh, status update. Okay, Nyawa, Ona. All right, Ona, have a good evening. Okay, Council, that leads us right into our adoption. Sorry, I just want to maybe check back in with Shirley to see if we've had any confirmation of Dorsey Russell in relation to the central polling officer for the federal election. Shirley? Shirley, are you still there? Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> No problem. Just wanted to see if you had any confirmation of uh, Dorsey Russell. No, I haven't. Okay, thank you for that. That being said, then council will move right into the adoption of the general council minutes of August 24th. I'll move. Moved by Michelle, seconder. I'll move, second. Oh, sorry, my apologies, I'm Audrey. <laughs> sorry, Audrey, move. Was that moved by Audrey? <laughs> Sorry. Moved by Audrey for the minutes. I'll is there second. a seconder? Second by Michelle. <laughs> Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motions carried. Okay, we'll shift into now to recommendations from the ethics committee. Uh, recommendation 6-1. I think we need new. It looks like these are. Yeah, these are all going to be yours. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe go to Wendy's. Give a quick my my uh, Wendy's question. My agenda just popped down. Please. Okay, sorry, Wendy. Did you have a question? 
I, I do. I, I read, well, I was looking for information on these because the description doesn't say anything except for the last one. Um, I do have to declare a conflict on, um, on Sam Gray's application, but on the rest of them, I was looking for information. I don't know what, you know, this water surveillance is, the wastewater and SARS. It kind of raises some questions. So is there more information on that? I, I'm going to look to the ethic committee members for assistance on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'll check in with uh, Michelle first and then over the Nathan. Sorry, there's kind of constriction here. Okay, so with the one for SARS, what the University of Waterloo in partnership with the EMT, they're trying to, or I guess I should say um, fire, they're looking to trace um, and detect COVID within the watershed or the sewer, the sewer shed in Ishwigan. Nathan, can you actually add more? I'm going to uh, charge my laptop. Yeah, there's, um, so they had a number of sample sizes and what they're doing is they're partnering with Guelph University uh, as part of our ECG to look at um, uh, the 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 samples within the Oswegan watershed and whether or not there's traces of COVID and whether or not they can trace that um, and use that as an indicator um, for um, detecting and preventing um, within a certain sample size. So this is um, something that's been um, ongoing at the ECG, but with the partnership and the and the data being now collected at a university level through their ethics, it came down through the ethics department. I mean, sorry, to the ethics committee for our deliberation. So um, that's kind of where that is in terms of the actual science behind the tracing and, and the sample size. I don't have the proposal in front of me to get the hard data on it, but. Um, but that's kind of in a nutshell what uh, what it's looking at. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Michelle and Nathan. Are there any further questions or comments? Wendy? Yeah, so the way that this is worded, this is to approve two individuals. It's their application to conduct research. So I took it as that Ashley Russell Taylor and Mark Servos are attending the University of Waterloo and received a research grant to do this work. What I hear Nathan saying is that Six Nations Fire applied to do a research or I don't know, it's not making sense because it's not what this says here by the sounds of it. And for me, I mean, I don't know, I assume the ethics committee have analyze this but there's huge implications for this and do we have this mapped out like in terms of the university of waterloo because i mean this is i mean disease control right there's there's a lot there's a lot of implications and i don't know where it's going and what's happening with it but like who is actually submitting who got the research grant is it us through our own fire department? No, my understanding is, um, yeah, the summaries didn't do any justice to this and I don't have the info because they were so deep in, in each of these projects. So it, in my understanding, it was the University of Guelph that has the application <laughs> in conjunction with ECG and, and Ashley Russell Taylor being the incident commander was named on it. So. You're right, the motion is kind of wonky and how it's phrased. Um, and definitely the, the uh, when I read the description, it didn't do it justice. Um, do you have, Michelle, do you know who the exact um, individual was? Yeah. That, so the yeah. principal investigator is Mark Servos from the University of Waterloo. So yeah, they would be the lead on this with, as you said, I said EMT, ECG, I apologize. So, so that would, in an essence, be us, right? 
because ECG is our, our mechanism. So Six Nations Council is actually the partner to, to this. Because how do we separate that, that emergency control group, which is a group that's being brought in based on a mandate under community emergency? It's not an ongoing entity program. It's like, it, it, it sounds to me, it sounds to me like there, there's some more work that needs to happen for clarification on this piece. Uh, maybe perhaps at this time, instead of going back and forth with uh, questions and answers we don't have, that we maybe hold off and defer this item and bring it back at our next general council, if that's okay, and we'll get further clarification. Yeah, I actually want to make a comment. I know ethics, uh, we're really behind in revamping what we're supposed to do because I, I do believe council needs more information. Uh, I, I think for all of them, it's maybe um, you're going to have questions. And so I know they've come forward back in, I want to say June and July. So if we can maybe uh, have Teresa add more information because the ethics applications are there and we've had those conversations at committee level. and. Uh, yeah, it's just having to have all that background information given to all the counselors. So we need to really beef up the report that goes forward, um, which I know was asked at two previous meetings. So if we can do that, and uh, maybe it can come back, maybe even at finance committee, so that council counselors understand um, the whole background. Yeah, yeah, I think that that would be, and I know we've discussed this piece as well, Michelle, in terms of really that that reporting format and what that looks like, uh, so that we're all on the same page, that we, we know exactly, uh, you know, it's, it should all be consistent across the board and for any application really to full council that comes through the ethics committee. Yeah, because really the PowerPoints that is provided by, um, Mark and, and Russell answered a lot of those questions and, and that should have been provided. Yeah. So we'll we'll work on those pieces, but for now what I'll what we'll do is defer recommendation six one. I'm not sure if we're having this any same issues with the remaining three. I know there was a conflict called uh, from Wendy on the last one, uh, but perhaps maybe what we can do is defer recommendation six one at this time uh, for so that we can clarify some of those items that were raised. Uh, and then maybe perhaps if we can move to 6-2 and if are, are we prepared uh, to approve, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce the first name, Elia? Oh, I see Audrey. Yeah, we council asked a while back for more information to come with, with these um, ethics uh, motions. So I think they all should go back and I think they all should get some more documentation to go with it so that you're not trying to get so, with your vote. I, I actually, you know, I actually agree with Audrey on this point because I think it might be more even adding pressure to our administration because that seems to be uh, where the work needs to happen is at an admin level. So maybe perhaps until, you know, full council's position could be where if we don't have all necessary information these motions coming from ethics that or until uh you know the changes that we need to see happen uh actually happen is when we'll start to approve these ethics recommendations i know that's going to sound a little harsh uh but we have been waiting for these changes for for a couple of months and i, I think they're rather quickly change quick changes so maybe uh, just looking to council uh, on this piece, uh, if we're all in agreement to maybe send these items all back and work with our administration, Teresa, uh, so that we can, again, go over these on a more wholesome level and get all the necessary details and that it comes more consistent across the board. Is there any opposition to that? Okay, seeing no opposition, um, I also just had a message. Shirley, thank you for that, Shirley. So we'll work on this piece uh, on the admin side as well, and we'll make note of that for Darren. Okay, that being said, I'll shift in uh, to political updates really quickly. Christopher, I know there was uh, some, some counselors were unable to join us uh, last evening, but wanted to maybe just have a quick, just verbal update on our Meet the Candidate night last evening in relation uh, to the riding of Brantford Brant in the upcoming federal election. 
I also, just before Christopher will give just a short verbal update, I also had asked him to provide a written update on some of the items that were mentioned from each of the parties uh, or candidates rather last evening. Uh, so that will also be sent in follow up to this verbal update. Christopher. Thanks, Chief. Yeah, so we had a, a good meeting last night with four of the local candidates. Actually, all five candidates did participate in some level. The Green candidate, unfortunately, couldn't attend, but she did submit a written statement. Uh, so all of that can, and that was read out uh, at the end of the meeting. So all of that can be viewed in the Facebook live, uh, live stream. Um, it was a good meeting. It was a productive meeting. Uh, as the chief indicated, there will be a written uh, report in follow-up to that. Um, but uh, however the election turns out on Monday evening, uh, we will be following up with the successful candidate uh, immediately afterwards to follow up on the results of this meeting. So uh, I think everybody came away with the same sentiment that it was a productive meeting. And uh, so we're very glad about that. Uh, but uh, indeed, the election is still uh, up in the air. Uh, I think a lot could change in the next week. But, um, but at this point, we, uh, we just have to wait and see. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that, uh, for that update, uh, Christopher. Also, I wanted to bring another update, uh, or rather, uh, just discussion um, and on, under the political update is in relation to... Ontario's position, and I know Christopher has already drafted a, a letter uh, in relation to Ontario not recognizing as a statutory holiday on September 30th. I'm sure we've all seen that. Um, and so I know we've also sent that over for um, edits from the, for the Survivor Secretariat on some of their thoughts. Uh, so Kim Murray will also be looking to some edits, but I also wanted to get really just uh, feel, get a feel out for council on um, what are your thoughts on Ontario's position to that matter? So if we can just maybe pause if there's any comments on that piece. Our, our goal is that we wanted to have it to full council for any edits and as well to send it out as an open uh, community letter to the Premier. So really just wanted to pause. Is there any uh, questions? Chief, any questions in relation to that item? Michelle? Um, that, that was live streamed last night. There's a recording on our Facebook page, correct? That, that, yes, correct. that is correct. Just so community knows, because I know individuals had didn't see it and they want to see it so they can decide who to, to vote for. Yeah, so they, uh, they can just visit our Six Nations uh, of the Grand River Facebook page and they should be able to access it there. Also, too, just so is there any opposition to, to we'll get this letter sent off? I just wanted to see if there's any other position and how councillors felt in relation to Ontario's position. Okay, sounds like there's no opposition. Sounds like we're all in agreement. We'll get that letter to you, council. We want to have that out uh, and sent by tomorrow. Uh, so we'll uh, keep an eye on your on your emails for any edits yeah, that you may see. Also, again, we've have have and we'll be sending this over to the secretariat for any edits from Kim and Sev survivors as well on their thoughts. Um, that leads me into the next part, which is scheduling of the uh, on our agenda. So obviously, we have general counsel this evening, building an infrastructure uh, next week. Uh, sorry, corporate emergency services uh, and the next week into general finance and at the end of the month, political liaison. Uh, again, there's other items that we'll be scheduling further uh, on our agendas as well. So we'll look to those. Uh, that being said, there was no, no new business items. Uh, so that does complete our agenda for this evening. Uh, I will look to a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Moved by Nathan, second by Wendy. All in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motions carried. Uh, thank you all and have a good evening.